Hello and welcome to another demo, this time on how to create a Jenkins pipeline using GitHub webhooks. So this is really cool um, and it's probably something that all of you, if you don't already know, would love to be able to do and it makes a massive difference to your CI CD pipeline. So being able to create and use Jenkins as part of your CI CD pipeline is vital in the DevOps world, it's on every resume everywhere and if you know how to do it, it's only going to help your career. So. For this demo, what I'm using is a Jenkins server. It's already pre-built, ready to go. Um, if you want to follow a previous video, I'll tell you how to install it and set it up. And there's the video link. I'll put that video link in the description. Uh, I've also got a GitHub account. So we're going to be using a little app, nice simple one on my website that I cloned, uh, I forked from someone else, which is just really handy. And that's my little test page. It's very, very good. Um, and a spare server. So this is actually running on just a server, just for the purposes of this demo, but you're gonna need a web server for this, or just your application, because what the steps I'm gonna do will apply to lots and lots of different situations. So, um, what I'm gonna cover. So we're gonna do a simple Jenkins pipeline. We're gonna add some sort of pipeline code um, and add a few stages, nice and simple, then we're gonna sort of build it up slowly. Um, but then once we've done that, we're gonna create the access token in GitHub. We're gonna set up those credentials in Jenkins. Then we're gonna add a webhook to our GitHub project so that when we commit our code, it tells Jenkins that there's been an update. Um, then we're gonna modify the pipeline in Jenkins to run the script via like a Jenkins file. And I'll add that in and we'll see that working. And then we're gonna hopefully watch the application and the pipeline work in action. So as I make a commit in Git, that pushes out the pipeline and the workflow in Jenkins and Jenkins orchestrates that. And we see the update at the other end and it should be fine. I'm gonna put a couple of helpful links in. This is just a visualization of what we're gonna do. So we've got, this is you updating your code. You commit your code to GitHub. GitHub fires off a webhook. Jenkins then sees that, pulls down the code and then runs the SSH commands and everything else that we planned. And we see the update happen in real time. Okay, so <clears throat> let me just move this out of the way and we'll crack on. So starts with a simple login. So once you've got your Jenkins server, just log in. So I haven't got any jobs here, it's all new. Um, so the first thing to do is to create a job. So we don't need to do anything with Jenkins or any on any server at the moment. We're gonna give it a name, web app, and we're gonna give it, click on pipeline, and we're gonna click OK. That's it, now you're left with this page. So we don't actually have to do very much to create the pipeline. So if you come to this setting, like basically Jenkins getting started again, these links will be in the description, and you just scroll down. I mean, it's always good documentation, definitely read it. Um, we're just gonna add in this pipeline here, and then we're gonna build on this. So you cut it straight out, and that's it. So I haven't got, not doing anything else here, not ticking any boxes. We're gonna save this, and we're gonna build it and then we're gonna see what happens. So it always takes a second, and then it pops in, and we can see stage one, done. So you might recognize this. Um, more Obviously there are more complicated uh, sort of pipelines out there. We're gonna set three stages up. So in my documentation, I've already got some code. <coughs> so, and this will actually be in the Jenkins file that's gonna be in my GitHub page. It doesn't exist at the moment, but it will, and it will be based on this code that I'm about to create. So if we go back into configure and go back down here, we're gonna replace all of this with literally stage one, two, and three. And that's it, save it, build now. And number two will pop in. And again, it's not doing anything, so it's really very quick. These are just dummy steps. So now we need to build up our steps. So I'll go over to my page. So I'm gonna run some commands. Now these commands won't be the same for whatever you wanna do, but for me, I wanna control a web page. So the first thing I'm gonna do is make sure I can pull down the code. So if I go into configure, I'm gonna swap out this stuff here with mine. So what I'm gonna do is, where is it? Yeah, there it is, right, so I'm gonna, grab the clone address. So let me grab everything here, copy and paste, and I'm just gonna replace the stage one. So, so above those curly braces to there. And then I'm just gonna change this for this. So this is my web URL, so get yours. You know, you can do the same thing, or even use mine, doesn't matter. You can clone it. 
Um, so what it's going to do is Jenkins itself is going to clone it locally. And that just proves that you've got connectivity um, and that it will actually sort of clone it. So that's all I'm going to do. So take this line out. So it's going to delete the web app directory so I can run this multiple times. And the first thing it's going to do is just delete that. And then it's going to clone this web app one directory for me. Right, so let's save that. Now build now. So number three should pop in. Oh, we've got an error. Let's see what we've got. It's probably a typo on my part. Okay, yeah, so there's an issue here. This is really good to see because you might make the same mistake and go, oh my God, what is all this groovy errors? So go back to the project, go to configure, scroll down, and you can see here that there's no there's no single quote to close it off. So just put that back, save it, build now. We should get number four. Okay, number four is running. So you see it's got rid of them. Because we've changed one of the steps, it's actually given us a whole new reading now. So we can see that it took a second. So if we go into the cart into log, we can see that it did a clone. So it's cloned into the web app one directory. So that's good. So back to the project. Let's do a configure. Now the next step, I want to update stage two. So stage two for me is going to be connecting to my server and I'm then going to do a git pull while on the server into a particular directory. So again, we copy the same sections. So I'm going to replace these three lines with the three I've already prepared. So I've changed the name of it to push repo to remote host. And then I'm going to echo that I'm going to connect to the host. And then I've got a pem key. So this is going to do this as a Jenkins user. So you need to be able to SSH without, you know, with a key, without username and password to a remote server. So this is my remote server. And then when I get there, it's then going to run a sudo command because it needs root, root credentials or root privilege to be able to pull down into this directory. And then it's going to do that. So. One second. Okay, so clear this up. So what I've done already, so inside my var www.html, where I'm going to do this git pull, I already have my, my stuff running. So if I just do an ls minus al, you can see that this images and style and index.html is, is what is here. And if we do a git remote minus v, we can see that it points to webapp.1.git, which is which is this. So this is our code. It's already in place. You can already see it on the website. And what we're going to do when we run this command is we're going to SSH with the key as the user to the IP address. And then we're going to do a sudo git minus c to the directory. And we're just going to basically do a git pull from that directory. That's it. And then that will update. <clears throat> now, because I haven't made any changes, it should just work. So let's just save it and build now. So we should get number five this time. We did, and again, it changes the boxes because we've changed the bundle of titles. So we can see here, if we look that it's finished successfully, if we go to the console output, we can see that it did a clone locally, that's cool. Then we connected to the remote server and we ran our git pull and it's already up to date and then stage three doesn't do anything. So let's go back to the project, back to configure. Now what I'm going to do is at the very end, I'm just going to stick in a stage where it says that the web's, you know, it does a check to see if the, um, website is up. Now we don't have to have this. I'm just trying to build up the steps for you guys. So let's come back over here. So check the websites up. And we're just going to run a simple curl command with some options. And that's just going to give us an output. Okay, so let's save that. So we've now got three stages. Let's do build now we should get number six. Again, it should refresh this look. Okay, so now it all the names match up and we just have a quick look at the console we know it's successful we know that we've got an okay back so that's absolutely fine so that's working so without doing anything on github without doing anything on any servers we've got a working pipeline the only things you do need to consider are how jenkins is going to connect to your remote servers so i'm using a key yeah. but how you connect is totally up to you this is just my example Okay, so the next step is, go back to my notes, 
So we've done the simple Jenkins pipeline. We can see that that's working. Um, we now need to create the access token in Git. So let's go over to GitHub and then go to me into settings and on the left as you scroll down there's a developer settings here click on developer settings personal access token generate a new token web app click on repo um, it's totally up to you if you pick any more I'm just I just need that so I'm going to generate that and then cut and paste this so this isn't going to be here for long guys so it is going to get deleted after I finish okay so now that we've um, save this we go back to Jenkins manage Jenkins configure system and we're going to scroll down till we get to git hub server here it is so you might just see it like this but just open up click on github server now it already has the API here you don't need to change anything but here we're going to add a credential and we're going to use secret text and the secret text is that. The ID is web app. It can be anything, just web app. And then I'll put web app in the one below and add that. I'm not going to bother to save it. Then in credentials, tip the bottom down, the drop down, and do test connection. Okay, that is verified. If you don't get that, then there's something gone wrong somewhere. And you need to go back and check your key. Make sure you maybe cut and paste it correctly. So we now have connectivity to GitLab. Okay, that's cool. So we're going to save that. And so now we've got connectivity and we've set up those credentials in Jenkins. We're going to create a webhook to our project. So back into the personal access token page, just back up and back up, get back to our thing here. And in here, the local repo settings, go to webhooks and then add a webhook. So I wrote this down earlier. So you can just literally get the URL from here. Copy paste that, stick it there. And then we also need to add in uh, the GitHub webhook, literally just that. So you pop in here, the webhook, keep that the same. Don't need to give it a secret, just push events, active and then add the webhook. So this should tell us if it works okay it's got a tick on it success so that's good so the next thing in my list I will get back to that so I've got to cut another screen on the other side so now we're going to modify the pipeline so we go back into Jenkins and we go back to our web app and we modify the pipeline. So this time, instead of using this script here, we're gonna put it into an SCM file. So grab the information, copy it, go back to Git. Now you have options on how you put this in. I'm just gonna create a new file and I'm gonna call it Jenkins file. And in here, I'm gonna just cut and paste everything there. That is everything that we know works. We've already verified it. It's called Jenkins file. It has to be called Jenkins file, I believe. So now commit the new file. Okay, so it's now here. We can have a look at it and there it is. So we in here now, we flip over and we do pipeline script from SCM. And then we're gonna change this to Git and then we're going to give it a git repository and the git repository is that one so just go to code copy the https put that in there we don't need to give it any credentials i'm just going to tell it to use the master branch or main branch whichever one you want um, and it's going to look for the jenkins file in the root directory so you could put it somewhere else if you wanted to and it would go and look for it so i'm going to save this okay so because it's a new pipeline, we're going to do build now, and that will go off. That will go off to GitHub, and it will check all our connectivity, and then it will run. So it looks like it's failed. I'm able to find Jenkins file. 
Ah, lowercase f, I believe. Okay, let's check. Let's change that to a lowercase f. Commit. Okay. So hopefully I've got that right. So let's go back to the project and run it again. Okay, it looks like it's running. So let's go to the console app and see what happens. So, did the clone. Yeah. So it looks like it's finished and it's got the okay. Right, so we've run it for the first time manually. Go back to the project. So now that we've got a webhook in place, if we go back here, go into the index file, edit it. So normally this would, this is just to test the pipeline, but once you've got your pipeline in place, you'll do it in, in, in the code itself, not here. Let's add another one of these straight underneath. Let's do automation and CICD. So it's been updated, so I'm going to commit it. This should kick off a pipeline. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Okay, so I did save it and expected it to work, but I forgot one thing. So I need to make one tick box exercise. So if we go into configure and we go into GitHub, so scroll down, keep all this stuff the same. We're going to add this GitHub hook trigger for SCM polling save that so now if there's an update it should go through so if we go back into our web app and that index.html we're going to again just add just add some changes and save that and then go back to github i really hope it pumps in right number nine brilliant so it didn't do anything didn't touch it all i did was commit the code it's now pending, it's running. I'm just gonna leave that to run. It says it's finished. Let's test if it, the web page actually updates. So this is the original page. Let's update it. There it is. So it's there, fantastic. So one other thing you can do is if you go into settings and look at the webhook for the repo, and you click on this one, you can see as you scroll down that these are all the previous attempts. So you can see the, all the times it was triggered you can pop in and then you can see the response so you can see it tells you how far it got so that's really good right, so let's just do one more thing I want to see it work one more time we're going to update the index.html one last time I'm just going to take these out I actually update it realized they didn't make any difference get rid of them save it pop back into Jenkins we should number 10 should pop in in a second there it is popping up here Right, there we go, it's running. And it's done. Fantastic, let's go and check. And the updates are gone. So that is how you set up a Jenkins pipeline. Hope you managed to stick with me through all of that. It's definitely worth knowing how to do. You know, you'll get asked questions on this in interviews. Do you know how to use Jenkins? And if you can demonstrate what we've just done with the Jenkins file, in Git, then you're on your way. You know, take it, change it, make any updates to your own application. Have any questions, just put them in the chat. I'll try and get back to you as quick as I can. And yeah, subscribe. Thanks very much. Have a good day, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.